So they're all coming in now. So you're all welcome to this Friday, all things marketing session from the Think Tank. And we're absolutely honored. I'm honored as a fellow XXV family member <laughs> of these two wonderful business people, marketeers, and just genuinely caring people. Mary Fisk Taylor, Alison Tyler Jones, thank you for being here. I'm going to hand it straight over to you guys to talk about all things marketing. See you at the other side. Okay. Thank you, Ronan. Thank you so much for giving us this platform and allowing us to do this. And a big thanks today to my great friend, Alison Tyler Jones. Hi, Alison. Hello. I'm so happy <laughs> to be here. I know. I know. You know, it feels like we've been talking and texting and everything, but um, I get all this great knowledge and I'll, okay, I'm doing this. I'm going to tell on you. So Allison's like, so what are we going to talk about? I'm like, I don't know. Just take them to ATJ church and it's going to be great. <laughs> just don't even, let's not plan anything. This is going to be so awesome. Um, cause I know I personally love being able to, you know, Ronan mentioned that we're in a mastermind group together and we get to, we get to talk to each other here and there and rely on each other, but I just get such great little nuggets of information from you all the time. And, and I know you feel the same way about so many people that you yeah. get a chance to just text with or chat with or whatever. And we've had some great group, you know, group calls, but I thought, wow, let's just really do a deep dive today with you because the, the thing that I love um, about your business, your business is very similar to mine, but very different from, from my yep. business, meaning we're, our core values and, and what we photograph is very similar. Our styles are very different, you know, a lot of things, but you have such a fantastic way. Your photography, we always, I feel like we don't give you the credit that's due with your photography. First, I want to start with that. Before we even talk about sales and marketing, her work is beautiful. It's clean. It's timeless. It's everything that I think mine is, but our work could not look any more different, quite <laughs> frankly. But it's the same philosophy, right? Just creating these timeless, authentic heirlooms for your families to love and enjoy forever. Is that kind of where you... How did you start? Like, I know you weren't always in owning a portrait studio, you were a business owner, but right. how did you start and vision, I want to create these massive images of kids goofing off and playing around and dancing and families just hugging and where did that come from for you? Well, I'm a, I am the mother of seven. Um, I have two children and then I uh, went through a divorce and married five and both of my children have autism. And so we have a lot a lot going on in our family. So a lot of kids, a lot of personalities, a lot of crazy. And it's really hard to get good pictures of my, my kids, especially these kids are kind of notoriously hard to photograph because right. you know, they, don't, they don't operate with the same operating system a lot of times. So um, I was, that was always a goal for me. And so I love, um, I love classical portraiture. I think it's so beautiful. My mom really did a lot of that when we were growing up and I have beautiful heirlooms that she had created hand painted art, you know, like your work really, really, I really respond to that because that is what my mother had done for us and their heirlooms. And so, but I couldn't do that. Uh, because I don't like, I don't like a tripod and I, I'm a, I love to interact a lot with my subject as far as like, sometimes their kids are hanging off of me. So, <laughs> um, uh, so part of what I get from my clients and part of what I get from that interaction is kind of what I didn't get from my own children. It's, it sounds mm -hmm. kind of sad, but you know, I am a like more caretaker role with my special needs kids. And so what I get from my clients' kids is just that normal, you know, whatever normal is, but that interaction of just, it's so endlessly fascinating to me, every little thing that kids do and how they do it and how they interact. And so that feeds me in a way that, I just never got as a mother uh, of my children. I, I have a different kind of mothering. It's oh, more of a yeah. caretaker role, but that just feeds me. And so I just find it so, I love to tell that story to tell the story of, yeah, they could sit there in a cute outfit, but then they were like, you know, elbowing the brother as he fell off the, like that is the real to me. That's what I see with my seven kids is, is that interaction. So I love to tell that story as well um, in my work. And so oh I think my I God. guess that's you know, kind of where it came from. 
that's awesome. And I never thought about that. And I know we've had very candid conversations about your family and your children. And it's, it's an amazing blended family and now grandbabies involved and everything else you're getting, you know, all that, you know, later, maybe getting all this, you know, well, not right now, none of the hugs yeah. and love right now, no. that, yeah. but um, you know, that's a really great point. Did you always love photography? Did you kind of have a, a list or a goal that you were going to go into photography um, you know what I mean? How did I you did. end up as a portrait artist owning a well, very successful portrait studio? Well, I mean, you know, we've all heard the stories like in fourth grade, my mom gave me the camera. I loved it. And then I was a high school yearbook editor yeah. and I thought I was going to be a journalist. And, um, but then I just didn't have the patience mm -hmm. to go get those stories. It was really more with the camera. And so when I found out that we could be in the dark room, alone and away from the other staffers in the yearbook and that that was way cooler and we could like ditch class and go take pictures of like the cute guys on the <laughs> i'm down with that yeah. yeah so but so i just kept that up as a side uh i always loved photography i always had that going i was always um had a camera i always had a dark room you know just okay. on my own that was always kind of just a hobby and then i had a my previous business to to this one was a scrapbooking store and we were the first scrapbooking store in the country outside of Utah. And so a lot of the people that are kind of like famous scrapbookers now came up through our um, wow. store, which is kind of cool. You know, I, I said we were actually better talent scouts than we were anything else. But um, <laughs> that taught me a lot about business. It taught me a lot about, you know, average sale. It taught me a lot about volume. It taught me a lot about uh, margin um, and, you know, delighting clients and surpassing mm -hmm. expectations and all of that kind of stuff. So I feel like once we sold that off in 2005, I thought I'm just going to do, I'm not going to make one more hobby into a business. I'm just going to take six months off. I'll do a little bit of photography to get me through and then I'll do whatever the next thing's going to be. And then here we are 15 we years are. later and this is what we're doing. So. And yeah. killing it. So when you started, when you opened your studio, cause I mean, I, when I think of your work, I obviously, and I know you guys do some other things, but family, children, like that's, yeah. I'm not seeing tons of even itty bitty baby stuff, newborn. Uh, newborns are boring. They're, they're, they're boring. I'm they're boring. ugly and they're boring. <laughs> and, and I mean, and I had, I mean, and I love babe, you know, I love yeah. my own kids, but I just, I will only photograph a newborn in context of family. So I only right. want to photograph the newborn as it made a family yes. or it made an older brother or an older sister, but like the newborn in a bucket, I, I just, not I'm not good at it. I'm just not either. good at it. I'm I mean, there either. are people that are amazing at it and I, yeah. I just, I've tried it and they just look like a, you know, like a mouse that's asleep with something on their head. Like it just doesn't, <laughs> I, I, I can't do it, but I, I mean, like I, I know some amazing people that can. So, and God you know. bless them. Cause we, we need yeah. it. It's just not my, I, I understand, but even like, uh, you know, weddings and stuff, you really did you, when you, when you opened the studio, were you super focused on that? Did you have that vision in mind or did you have to kind of do like a lot of us do when we open, we try a little bit of this and a little bit of that till we find yeah. our niche. Well, I swore I would never, I swore I was going to sell files because I didn't want to be messing with like, I didn't want to do orders. Real? Uh, wait, I'm, wait a minute. And like, I can't, I, open the yeah. studio? I can't be doing prints. I can't like, what if I get it wrong? It's like, I'm just going to charge, you know, a couple of hundred bucks. I'm going to do digital <laughs> files. I'm going to sell them a disc and then that's going to be so easy and that's going to be great. And then I did it for, you know, I, I always take pictures for my family. So I go over to my sister's house and she's got this 20 by 30 canvas that she had printed at Costco that was supposed to be black and white. And it was purple. Uh, and, yeah. You know, and she's Caroline? like, she, no, like, my other sister. Okay. And she's, and she's like, I've told everybody in the neighborhood that you're doing photography now. And I was like, <laughs> Don't the, 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 the control, the control freak in me just rose up. And I realized Oh no, I actually no, I can't, I can't allow people to print my work because I come from fine art in the dark room. And I knew that like capture is only like 25% of that whole process. Yeah. So I was like, okay, this, no. So if I'm going to do it, plus I also talked to a good friend who was on the other side of town who had started her own photography studio. And she, I spent, went and just talked to her for a while. And she's like, you're leaving so much money on the table if you do it like that. And so then like those two things together, me not being in control and leaving money on the table, that was a non-starter. Like that cannot happen in my life. So I just thought if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it right. I'm going to learn it. I'm going to have to learn, you know, Photoshop and all of that, you know, all those things. Um, but, 
and I swore I would never do families. Like I'm only going to do kids. I'm going to do digital and I'm going to give discs. Right. That was it. How did that work out for you? Yeah. So within, within a month, it was literally 30 days to where I was like, okay, I guess I got to get a lab. I got to, you know, so I had to start that, like that learning curve that was like, you know, going this way. But I also knew because I'd had this other business that everything is, you know, you can figure everything out. Everything's the how to is the easy part. It's the want to. And so, and I think that is one of my favorite books that I've read is where they're talking about that if you have a weak want to, like if you don't really want to do something, then everything that is against you becomes larger than life. So the economy, the pandemic, the competition, the whatever, because really those, can, those just act as excuses for, uh -huh. because you really don't want to do it. So if you really, really want to do something, you're going to do it. What book is that? Let's look quick. Um, it's, I think it's called the nine lies that are holding your business back. Okay. And it's by, like Chandler, I'll, I'll, I'll find okay. it. Post it in the book. Cause I love, um, I don't know if I've even read that book. And her, so Allison and I are these, like, we have a time difference. She's in Arizona. I'm in Virginia, but I'm always awake and she seems to always be awake. So for, yeah. whether it's crazy early in the morning for me or late, late at night for me, Allison's always awake. So I'll say, have you read this book? Or did you read this book? Or we're sending like funny things. So book I'll nerds, uh, fellow I'll book nerds. Hey, readers are leaders. Right. My I think it's Steve Chandler. I think it's nine lies that you're are right. holding your business back by Steve Chandler. That makes, that sounds familiar. And that I read that when I was, had my other business and it was like, that really, um, impacted me because I realized, you know, I think sometimes, especially when you're starting out or even when like things are hard and you think, you know, somebody is going to figure this out for me. Or like, for example, like when, when my kids were diagnosed, I th honestly thought that somebody, some autism fairy was going to show up at my house and go, okay, here's the book. And this is what you need to do. First, step one, you need to go here, you need to do this, and you need to get these services and whatever. And then I finally realized like, no one's coming. And yeah. that that's the case with no matter what you're doing in your life, even if it's like you hire an attorney, well, you hire an attorney because they have the training, but you still have to know what you want. Right. You go to the doctor. I still have to know what I want. I still have to know that like, no, I don't want to do chemo or yes, I do or whatever, you know, like yeah. we still have to have the vision. So that, that was something that really changed my life. And I think in this situation that we're in right now, it feels very unfigureoutable. It feels just like, oh my gosh, this is like the whole world, the rug's been pulled out from under the whole world. Yeah. But we also know that like, hey, we've survived other things and we're going to be fine. And if we want to do it, we're going we're gonna to find the way to do it, which is some of the things we're going to talk about today, right? Uh, yeah, because you know what? You just, you just hit on a really great word. And it's a word that I know that we use a lot um, in a lot of, in our business and on different groups of volunteer with, but vision. So um, in the idea of your business, like for me, for our studio, if you go with the whole Mike Michalowicz um, idea of the QBR, right? The queen bee yeah. role, you know? Right. So if you go with that idea, if you could only, if there was only one role in your studio that you could do, you could outsource everything else and it would be done to ATJ plus standards, which it would, it would never happen. And it wouldn't happen in my studio either, but let's just live in a fantasy world. Yeah. What would your... I know what mine would be. I know what mine would be. What would yours be? Well, I, it's interesting that you say that because that was, uh, when I read that book, that clockwork book is what she's talking about, that Queen yes, Bee sorry, yeah. Um, and so is, I struggled and struggled and, and I did my post-it notes and then I had my employees. So the, the premise is that you're like taking your post-it notes and you're putting your six major roles and then you take it down to three and then you take it down to two and then you take it down to one. And um, I came up with um, design. I love it. I can see but that. design is the number one thing for me because I'm designing the client experience. I'm designing how I want the work to look. I'm yeah. designing the, um, how I'm shooting. And the so posing, really the lighting, the outfits, everything. So it's pulling, it. it's pulling back from like, okay, I'm shooting, I'm selling, I'm marketing. I'm, I'm designing how all of that needs to happen and how my client interacts with that. So that's the role that cannot be replaced for me. And you're even designing the client experience, like, right? right you know, how right. they are handled from beginning to the end, which we're going to go to in a minute. Yeah. And, and I agree. I think that's Jamie's role in, in our business. I have a business partner, um, Jamie Hayes, and I think he's a designer more than me. I'm a vision. I vision. 
everything in that company, I'm the visionary. If I had, could do nothing else, what I vision for our business, I think is my most important role. More than me picking up the camera, more than me being in the sales room, marketing, whatever, because the vision all falls in line with that. So yeah. it's an interesting it, it, homework, guys. Homework for you all this weekend. <laughs> um, but something to think about, you know, because I think the first response a lot of times for us as photographers is, well, ph photography. No one can yeah. photograph like I can. Yeah. Well, you're right. Yeah. You're right. That is no, because honestly, I think like if, if, if things got really bad, I have our, I got my plan in place. Dan McClanahan, did. I'm going to get Dan McClanahan oh. on a flight. Jealous. And I'm going to have him come out <laughs> and I'm gonna, he's going to shoot everything. And then I am going to sell it silly. Like oh. I don't have to shoot it. I just have to design the whole experience, the whole, like how you bring love people in, how they interact with each other. I, I don't have to be, I mean, I love to shoot and I, I, I love that. But if something happened where I couldn't do that, the main thing the queen bee role for me is I, I have to be able to design that whole thing. I, I think vision that. is the same. So I love that. So in your designing, your design process for you, that starts somewhere obviously, but somehow or way along the line, your brand has reached someone's heart. They, it, they've, they visually seen it and they want it. So mm -hmm. tell me how this process starts with you. Ring, ring. Allison Tony Tyler Jen. Hi. Um, yeah, I want to come in and bring my family photographed. I really just been looking for some, maybe some, you know, maybe small prints. I, I might want to do some Christmas cards this year. I really want the files. That's really important to me. Well, tell me about your family. Tell me. Okay. Yeah. You know, I have two older kids. One's both in college. It's my husband and I, oh, and we have a dog. And so they're gone. They're not in your house anymore. They're not. No, they, they, no, they're not. They've, they're, they've abandoned you. They've abandoned me. They've heartlessly, and, mm -hmm. soul, soullessly abandoned yes. you. Well, you know, it's a great, this is a great time to do a family portrait. I, I've been in your situation. I know what that's like to have them leave. And I think you're so smart to do it right now before nobody's married, right? No, 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 no not yeah. yet. No. How old's your dog? Uh, my dog is uh, 10. Okay. So you're kind of on the cusp of things potentially changing quite a bit for your family. Right. Yeah. And even though this is a kind of a hard time, it also is very, it's a sweet time because it's still, you're still nuclear. Oh, and, and, I, yes. Cause they still rely on us. They're still yeah. on the payroll, obviously, right. but I'm so proud of them. Oh. I'm so proud of them. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So, um, so we, I would go more, I would spend like 20 minutes really getting to the details of about like but you're the, doing 20 minutes doing what this is what I love this is what I, I just love want I to know, know about your family I want to know because who mothers love to talk about their children and I and the thing is is that this is not a sales trick I can't do my job unless I know these things about you I can't I can't get that connection because you can't Photoshop love you can't Photoshop connection that that has to happen and I don't shoot on location and I don't shoot with background I shoot with no context I shoot with a seamless so the only thing that's happening in that image is the connection and the love or not between those people that's it so right. if I don't have that ability to elicit that and have that happen when we're in there together that doesn't work so so we, so I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about the family. And then at some point, um, I'm going to say, well, you know, what well, typically how we work is we set up, we'll set up three, three, main, three appointments. One is our, the first is our consultation where you'll come okay. into the studio. I'm going to show you kind of what we've done for other clients and get an idea of what would work best for you and for your family. Then we'll schedule, uh, we'll schedule this, the session. And then, um, at the end of, then about a week later, we'll, we'll schedule, we schedule these all at the same time. I'm not saying yeah. that's right. But anyway, we schedule the view and order appointment where you're going to come in and look at your images. And, uh, and then we'll, that's where we'll, you'll place your order and we'll, I'll have your walls laid out for you and we'll have it all figured out. And so we, we work a little different than most photographers in that we do specialize in a finished product. So that's wall art for your home or albums or custom designed albums. Um, and so, um, what should we, would you like to go ahead and set up a consultation? So then if you're still asking me at this point, 
the inevitable files or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Anything that you put on the wall or in an album, we, um, we give, we gift you social media files, which I think I might be changing that, but, um, but right now that's <laughs> what we're doing. And um, we, anything that you put on the wall or in an album, you would have social media files that you can share. Oh, um, good, we, good, good. Cause that's what yeah. they, cause you're, cause we are assuming, and this may not always be the case, but you know, we, and I, we do the same, are assuming that that's really what they're asking for. They want to yeah. be able to share them and show off. But what Allison just did was, first of all, she was listening. She heard what I said and she didn't just jump in with, well, this is what it costs and this is what we charge. She just started asking me questions about what the most important things in the entire world to me, my children, my dog, whatever order you want to put those in, depending on the day. Right. But, but she just started engaging with me and building a relationship with me in what felt like in a very authentic and genuine way. She's coming from a place of authority. Oh, I'm a mom. I get that. My kids, she's coming from that place. She's coming from that place of empathy with, oh, you know, you're so smart to do this. What a great time to do this. I don't know if you guys heard that. That's a, such a gentle shift in the way we work with and deal with potential clients or even existing clients. And I think Allison does it, you know, you know, in such a great way. And it's so important because that relationship building is what they can't buy. You can't buy that anywhere. Like it yeah. has to feel authentic and real. And I'm sure there's sometimes that you get somebody on the phone and it's just not jiving and working and they don't schedule a consultation. And it's, you know, good luck to you. And I hope they yeah. find the right fit. Well, and th that's because usually at that point, they might, they, at some point, they're going to ask me about price. Yes. You know, and so once, once we've gone and gone through, because the, the price is irrelevant. That's just the only thing that they know to ask for when exactly. they're calling around. It's like when you call around for a plumber, you don't know about, you know, you pipes and fittings and like, you just know, like, how much is it going to cost to fix my toilet? You know, right. but they're still going to have to ask like, well, what's wrong with your toilet? What sound is it making? You know, do you need a new toilet? Or do you just need the little flapper? Like there needs to be more information, but we're so freaking out thinking like, oh, I've got to like immediately lead with money. And that right. all these people are all just cheap. They just want files and they don't want to spend any money. So my goal, my whole business is built on three pillars, which is um, relation, relationship, finished art, and a long, and then a long-term plan over a period of time. So I need to be able to get that, hear what they're saying, get to know them, and then let them know, communicate that, that that's how we work. Okay. Let's say that again. Relationship, which is the relationship you're building with the client. Right. right? I that's want a relationship. Yeah. The relationship we're going to have a relationship. Capture and your, that your personal relationship with the client. Mm -hmm. Finished art. Is that what you said? Finished yep, art. Finished art. And then a long-term plan. Like I want to see their kids grow up. Like if, right. we, if you would just come to me now and your kids were, you know, as the ages that they are, I want to photograph I want to photograph your grandchildren. I want to right. photograph, you know, I have a lot of families who have that mature family profile and we, we photograph them every single year. Of course. Yeah. I have, just, I mean, why yeah. not? You know, so but is it because you talk about it now? Let's talk about that. That's a, now yeah. that's a deep dive. So this is where I think a lot of us leave money on the table. So say I came in, we had our consultation, which hopefully we'll get back to, cause I love your consultations yeah. and we're photographed and we're done. And we get, we bought a, nice piece of wall art. We've got an album. You're designing me the coolest holiday cards in the world. How do you get me to come back in? Well, holiday cards is a big one, you know, yep. because once they do that first, because our holiday cards are all custom designed they're and they're a deep. total pain in the butt. They're amazing. But, um, but that's probably our, that's our main um, marketing, really. That's our, where we, all of our refer, almost all of our referrals are coming from. And so as they're, once they get the crack, like once that card goes out and I'm wondering if I even have, well, I don't have a card here, but I have a hand up. Our cards, you know, are like very, yeah. you know, slick. Um, once those cards go out and their phone freaking blows up, they're hooked. Then it's like, I got to do this every year, but we don't just do holiday cards. You have to there add something go. to the wall or do an album. And then as I, as I'm laying out their walls, which, you know, this is all part of a big uh, process or experience for this client is we're I'm talking about next year. And that's what I, I'm talking about that in the consultation. So we want to make something that's going to be amazing now, but then we're, this is not inexpensive. So where's this stuff going next year and the year after that and the year after that. So I have that plan going forward. You know, do you have a space in your home that you have a family gallery that you've already started? And if not, why not? And maybe we could get that started. And then, you know, there's going to be the primary place where the art hangs for now. And then, you know, as how is that going to migrate throughout your house? And how are you going to rotate that art 
throughout the years. So you, so you feel like the reason that most of your clients, even the client that's like at a place in the life with me or kiddos, high school, you know, older kids. So they're not going through all the, the stages of the little ones and stuff that the big, big part is, are, are you call you're, you're talking about it. So when you're building their and designing their space, you're talking about, Hey, maybe next year, maybe next year we can, you know, do something more casual because y'all were dressed up. Maybe next year we'll do something more casual and have that fun thing. Or, you know, maybe next year we'll include the dog or, you know, whatever that is. And then you're, so you're talking about that. And then you've done these amazing custom and highly custom, very expensive. I mean, you, you charge, you charge like what you should for your holiday cards. You're already talking about now, maybe next year we can do a card like this. So you're already planting those seeds. So they're just calling you most of the time, I imagine. Or do you find yourself midway through the year saying, okay, let's start planning now? Well, in the view and or in the view and order session, I will um I will I let them know this in the consultation, but like once you've once you once we create artwork for you, then now you're part of the family and then you right. have priority booking. And so then we will pre-call you um, like maybe April, um, at, to get your session booked for the year, because some people want to, if they have older families, they want to shoot before their kids go to college, or right. they might want to shoot just before they go back. Um, you know, cause so I don't assume that everybody's going to want to do September, October, November, December, whatever. So, um, I just let them know that, that that's, that that's happening. We will be calling you to let you know, and some people will book actually book their next session at the view and order. So when they're placing their order, I have a couple of clients that are just like, let's just get it on the books right now. Yeah. And that's something that I feel like I'm kind of leaving money on the table. Like I should be suggesting that then at that point, like, okay, let's go ahead and get this on the books for next year. Even if we have to reschedule it, at least they have it in their head. Exactly. Well, no, I agree with you. And, and I think that's smart. Cause I mean, you have priority booking cause you're in the system, but yeah. maybe even saying something at the order session, I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm just thinking this is really, really smart and we don't do it either, but you're already priority booking cause you're in the part of the HAG family, but would you like premium booking? We can go ahead and do it right now. We're going to hold yeah. that spot for you. Almost give it a whole nother level, which, yeah. you know, just to kind of do that. So um, I, I love that. And I love that that's, that's, I mean, she just gave away a huge marketing, <laughs> a marketing tip. And I don't know if you guys are hearing it because sometimes we think of marketing as a newsletter or a lookbook or emails. And I do all these things. I, I have all these things in my processes, but I love the fact that the majority of her marketing is so incredibly organic and it's coming from her personally, just from her or, you know, or her very close staff. And they're just talking about the next time. She's just automatically assuming you're loving me. I'm loving you. This is all working out great. You're definitely coming back. And yeah. I mean, I guess it's no guarantee, but you're just assuming, of course, they're coming back. They're well, there's always a reason. There's always a reason to come back, you know? And so it's, and just as we're creative in our photography, we need to be creative in like, what are the events that are important to these people? What means something to them? So you, your dogs are becoming more important to you, right. you know? So as we're shooting that, this session with you and your kids and your husband and the dog, that's your family. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, potentially, you know, that dog is important. Like we could do that dog on the princess chair and yeah. do a little piece of art for her. And that doesn't involve anybody being home from college. That just involves you. And you don't even have to be cute. You know, you can just come <laughs> and bring the dog, you know? So there's always, there's always um, things that can be done and brainstorming. And, you know, to that end, I am not, I don't really think of myself as a great marketer. Like I've never really been able to get behind the whole like email blast. Like I just, to me, that's never felt personal. And so I really, um, when I found, uh, another Mike McCallowitz book is that pumpkin, the pumpkin plan. Yeah. Um, we, we are like serious as a heart attack about that. And we, I have that Excel spreadsheet that you can download off of his site and that is like my client assessment. And you're, I'm basically sorting my clients by revenue. And then by, you know, there's all these criteria that you're going through to sort them. And so I know at any given time exactly who my top 20 to 30 clients are. I, I just know, we know who they are and that they are, that's who I'm creating product for. That's who I'm creating my entire business experience for. And then those are the people that I'm contacting. And we have another, um, like this is our booking calls, you know, a sheet that we do. This is our booking calls for the year. And this is what my, uh, my client coordinator goes through. And so we just have 
everybody listed. And then she says, you know, this is who they talk. This is how I talk to them. Um, this is what they said they're doing this year. And so we're just letting them know, you know, that they have priority booking. And then for the top 20, I'm actually sending a mood board with this, this year's shoot. So Mary, you and your husband are coming. Last year we did casual in Hawaii, you know, cause I saw those pictures on your Instagram. Yeah. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, this year I think we should do black tie ball gown. You should be in your sequined pants that you wore at PPA at the <laughs> awards ceremony. Um, and, and then everybody be in like ball gown, black tie, the dog should be in a, in a bow tie. And then we should do this for the card. But then this really needs to be something amazing. That's like, a, you know, an heirloom piece of art that's going to go over your fireplace that we didn't do something for this time. And right. so I'm sending a mood board with shots that either I've done for other clients or even stuff I've pulled off of Pinterest. Like I've always wanted to try this. I think this would be so cool. And my clients lose their mind over that because they, I, I'm just designing what the shoot is going to be for them. Like, this is what I think we should do now. Absolutely. They can say, you know what, we're going to be in Hawaii this year. We're just going to get our pictures done there. And we're going to, we're going to come back next year. Totally fine. At least I, yeah. I know, you no, try. but we're letting them know before we open Allison's calendar to the public, you have priority booking. We want you to get you in and get all of her besties in before we let anybody else in. And then, um, then they they just appreciate it. But most people wow. are like, okay, great. I'm so excited. I can't wait. Um, you know, where, where should I go to get, where should I rent Texas or, you know, whatever. So that's phenomenal. So you, your top 20 is what you're doing yeah. that for. Top, it, it, okay. Mm -hmm. That's great. Now I've never heard that. I don't, I don't know where I missed that. I feel like I've, yeah. I've actually made you tell me everything, but I don't think no. I've knew that. That's phenomenal. No. And I, I think that's really smart. Now, Allison, what about uh, businesses out there? And there are some that we're not, not quite as established as you are, or, or we are, and maybe don't have that good client base yet. You know, they're still building it, right. uh, but they've got great work and, and they're moving forward. So how do you go about building that? To have that well, amazing. I mean, if you, if you just started yesterday and you haven't shot a session yet, then I think that would be applicable. That question is applicable. I think people hide behind that excuse, but like, I don't have that many clients. I don't really know. It's like, okay, if you have been in business for a hot second, there is somebody that you dealt with that you, that just like totally got you, that mm -hmm. totally loves what you do and was totally willing to pay for it. Mm -hmm. If that could be a, a, a per, one person, so who is that person and build your entire business around what they would want? Like you, we all know we have those clients that you're like, you know what, if I, if I just called her on the phone and told her like, we should get your boys in because their teeth are out, or we should do an Oreo cookie shoot, or we should do a, cause your kids love Legos. We should do a Lego thing or whatever. You know, they would come in because they love yeah. pictures and they love to do it, but we're just like so busy off doing whatever we're doing. But really, if we, if we just brought those people in more often and got and built that relationship, you know, for me, the one-to-one -one feels so much more easier to do because right. I don't need, so this was hard for me though, when I came from my previous business, because we did, you know, email, we did, um, mailers, we did, you know, hundreds sure. of, of, uh, newsletters, you know, schedules that we would send out for scrapbooking classes and stuff. And we were doing like a million dollars a year on a $20 average sale. So that's a lot of volume. Yeah. And so I came into this thinking that's how I need to be marketing. And I realize, no, 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 no. This is not how that works. This is, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't do a, a broadcast type marketing. That's something that I need to be better at. I, I don't do that. But I realize that actually this is way more one-to-one -one and that I don't need, I don't need those thousands of people. I'm doing maybe 80 to a hundred sessions a year. Right. And I only need to really like totally brainstorm and freak out and go to the mat for 20. Mm. Like I didn't, I'm not doing a mood board for everybody. Sure. Yeah, no, no, I get that. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. So that way it just, it made it more um, like, I really want to get, you know, if you, if I got like five to 10 really qualified clients in a year, that's a great 
that's a lot of, that's, a, that's a really good thing for my business. And so that feels organic, doable. I'm not like feeling, like, I don't need everybody. I don't need a thousand people in a year. I can't shoot a thousand people. In a year. No. And, and I get what you're saying, but you know, also let's just to boil it down and for everybody listening or that will listen to this, you know, 80 to a hundred. I mean, our goal is about 120, 125. That would be a really good if we hit our average or better every time. Yeah that's going to keep us in where we want to be. And we, we have very nailed down what we want our average sale to be. And, and if we don't hit it, we go back and say, okay, what did we miss? What did we miss yeah. here? What are we doing wrong? And, and unlike you, I do some broadcast marketing and I do, <clears throat> I, I have two kinds. I had do commissions or I do campaigns and I'm yeah. a big campaign person. That's working yeah. very well for me. It's getting new business into that's me. That's what I need to learn studio. from yeah. you. Yeah. Right. We, yeah. we should just swap brains for like uh, two weeks and we would rule the world. Right. Totally. Happen. Totally. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm your one. There would be no diet Coke left in the world, but no. we would definitely rule the mm -hmm. world. So, um, you know, when you get those clients that come in and you're at that consultation and they haven't used you before, how do you handle the consultation? Because I think a lot of us deal with this whole idea that people come in and they think, Oh, I'm doing this. So we're going to do everything. They're not thinking, Oh, let's just do this now. And then maybe next year, just my husband and I'll come because, you know, we haven't done a portrait together since we got married 26 years ago or, right. you know, whatever it is. So how do you kind of rein that energy in and get them focused on what we're going to do right now? And I, I love how you do this. And I, I know the answer, but everybody <laughs> needs to hear it. <laughs> well, I, it's, I think it starts in that first phone call of like li really listening to them about what's important to them and their relationships and then c just continuing that as they come in. And I feel like that one of the things when... I'm, I'm always talking about this with my sister, um, she, who's an interior designer, and she, we're all, we feel like we're always on the razor's edge of like completely spoiling our clients and giving them everything they want and like whoosh, training them, you know? <laughs> yes. So it's like, it's love, love train, love, yeah. train, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm like, what is that? You know, but, it, <laughs> but it is, it is a thing. And um, so the consultation is a chance for them to feel fully heard, to, for us to really get to know, but then also for them to understand how it is that we work and kind of what the rules of engagement are, I guess, for, and then also to have like a completely clear idea of how much they're going to spend. And so in that, in that call, when we're talking about the consultation, um, you know, and Jessica might be the one that's doing that, um, that call, she'll say, you know, we're setting up these three appointments and then we'll have a consultation with you and Allison. And Allison believes in complete transparency. So you will leave that meeting knowing exactly what your investment will be because she doesn't like anybody to have any surprises, you know, or I would say that myself if I was doing the call. Okay. So did everybody hear that? <laughs> Cause that is, that is gold right there. And I think that a lot of times we think, well, if we just get them in, they're just going to love us. They're going to love our pictures. And then no guys, I think it's super important for us to, first of all, not be ashamed of our prices and what we charge. Well, first of all, it's important to charge what you need to charge, to right. be profitable. but not be ashamed. And don't think you're just going to do this, this one, to, it, cause it, it doesn't, it just, it creates a lot of confusion. It, sometimes they might spend what you wanted them, but it becomes an issue with that. Anyway, yeah. it's not a good you way to burn, do it. Well, you're, you're burning their trust to the ground Yes. because what you're doing is I don't care what you've said. I don't care how well you got along in the end, you are holding their babies hostage. Yes, you are. And, um, they, you are on opposite sides of, you are on an adversarial relationship with your client and anything that puts you in an adversarial relationship with your client, whatever process, whatever created that, whether it's your pricing meaning you price too low. So you hate your client because they're not paying you enough. And whose fault is that? Um, anything that has you on opposite adversarial relationship with your client that has to be changed. And so, um, but I, I did that. I mean, we all did that. Like, Oh, they're just going to get in here and they're going to love them and they're going to buy them. So now I just get that out of the way in the beginning and tell them, you know, typically this industry has been built on take a bunch of beautiful pictures, get somebody in a room and just hope that they fall in love with them, buy them off. But that's not how I work. What I want to do is I want to create something that is personal to you, something that you value. Um, that, and so, and then I want to watch your kids grow up. I want to see, I want to see this, this family art populate your house over a long period of time, you know? So, so let's figure out what's important now. 
What are we doing right. now? Who is going to be in this image? And so then we talk about that. So then we, you know, we go through, we talk about that. And then I'm showing them on the screen, you know, here is, here is, you know, we have several different styles, whether we're shooting in a gray background or a white background or whatever, but I'm showing them like, here is our modern style. And then this is what it looks like in an interior. Here's our gray, you know, here's our chroma. This is what it looks like in interior. So you're showing not, them that and you're showing them an installation. An installation. You're showing them, so they're not just looking at a picture on a screen. No. They're looking at an actual product yeah. hanging on a wall. Hanging on a wall. Yeah. yeah. And then I've got, then I might have my, an album or something like that. But the, the message is like, we're not just shooting pictures just to make pictures because I don't sell printable digital files like we're we are creating something for your home whether that's wall art or an album so then we start to talk about and there's a whole process of this but uh, Ronan says he has questions all right finish that and I'll get to the question okay yeah so um we're good so where was I you show you're showing the styles and you're showing them the art yeah. I think what we're going to is that they're, they're going to choose the style, right? They're going to choose the style yeah. and then what's going to be photographed. And you're yeah. actually drilling it down to, okay, so I'm hearing you say you like yeah. the chroma look. That's what we're going to go for this time. This is the recommendation. And we're going to, the family, the family unit is what's important yeah. right now. Yeah. We're going to photograph the family. Then they're going to say, well, maybe the God, dad with the kids, maybe, yeah. maybe the kids, maybe the kids individually. Yeah. I love maybe, the my dad. House, so, maybe my nanny's going to come. Right. Right. Cause we want to get the nanny. And yeah. And so, <laughs> so then everything is like my, my way of being, and I think this is so important. And I'm, I constantly saying this to my employees my way of being, however we are with this, this information is how they will respond, how they will yes. be. If we're like, well, I mean, it's going to be $1,200. Is that okay? Then they're going to be like, what is going on? You know, yeah. if you're like, so I tell my, my employees all the time, I'm like, okay, how I need you to be is that you need to act as though somebody just pulled up in a Brinks truck. And for those of you who are not in the U S <laughs> that's, that's the big trucks that carry all the cash to the banks. Okay. So somebody has just pulled up in a cash truck and they've got, they've gotten out and they've come in and they're trying to figure out where they're going to roll the dolly of cash into what corner <laughs> they're going to roll it because they want everything we do and they can totally afford it. And so if somebody was doing that, if they were coming in with, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars that they wanted to spend with you, how would you react to them? You would be like, Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. You know, <laughs> we're going to get Jack's and your husband and we're going to get you and the girls and we're going to get the dog and then we're going to do this and we're going to do this and we're going to do this big wall gallery and we're going to do an album and we're, I mean, you would just be so excited, right? Yes. Yes. So excited. Right. So why are we judging what somebody else is going to spend and like looking at maybe what they're wearing or maybe that they ask for digital files on the phone because they didn't right. know what else to ask for that. We're like, not my client, you know, that's crap. I assume, I don't care what they're wearing. I don't care what they drove up in. I am assuming like, yes, you can afford me and you want everything that I do the full boat until you tell me no. So with that in the background, we're in the consultation and you're saying, well, I want my husband and Jack's and I want, I want me and the dog and I want this. And so as you're going through that, I'm like, oh, I love dads and their sons. Like, that's so great. So Mary, where will that image go? where is that portrait going to hang? Is that going to go on the wall or is that going to be more of an album? And now you've told me I have to buy it. Right. But, but do you just fall in, do, do clients just fall into line when you ask that? They do. And that's, yeah. this was a, one of the not. biggest things. They don't. They, don't. they do. Even if you then. say, oh kind no, of. they're still not understanding. Kind of. But what do they say? <laughs> what do they say? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Let's just, just go ahead and goal. shoot it. Let's just go ahead and shoot it. That's I don't know right. until I see it. You're I right. Until I see it, right? Right. Yeah, right. This all sounds good in theory until you're sitting there in front of somebody and they throw you a curveball and you're like, Mah. you know, so, so I learned So when they say, well, let's just see. I just say, look, Mary, listen, I love dads and boys that like, that is my favorite. I love me some boys, girls, <laughs> love the boys. Okay. So. <laughs> Here's the deal. We only, there's only so much energy and good expression and like to go around. So let's use that on the things that are most important to you. So if there's no place for that to go, if there's not a place that you can envision on the wall 
or there's not a place and we're not doing an album, then let's not stress Jax and everybody out. Let's just, let's just co concentrate on the family and the other things. So then the message is, I am not shooting that if there's not a place for it to go. Right, right, right. So that's going to be a shorter session. Well, yeah, because they're not, they're not committing to it. And I do, right. I think it's hard because I think, does it frustrate people when you say that? Cause they're like, well, I might want it. I just don't know. Right. So then I say, look, here's the deal. Like what's an album? Not everybody, you know, are you an album person? Do you love albums? Whatever. And so I'm like, oh, I don't really know. I'm like, you are, no matter what I do, no matter what we talk about, you're always, there are always going to be more images that you see that you love then potentially you might buy. There's, right. It's just the way it is. You're yeah. going to see more. What I need to know, the only thing I need to know before the session is, are we doing an album? Because that is a different kind of session than just portraits, than wall portraits. Right. If we're shooting for an album, that is more storytelling. That's if your kids were younger. That's your husband tickling jacks. That's the dog rolling on the floor. That's the in those in-between moments. And in their mind, they're thinking, yeah, I love those moments. And then, but we, if there's no place for those moments to go, then let's not do it. So I don't need to know right now whether we're doing an album or not, but on the day of the shoot, I just, when you come in, I just need you to say, yes, we need to shoot for an album because that's a different kind of shoot. And so they will walk in and they will say, you know what? I talked to my husband. We're going to, we're going to skip an album this time. We're going to do an album next year. Let's just stick with the family. What we talked about. Great. Or they're saying, we're going to do an doing album. It. Because that, at this point, they've gone home with a quote or pricing. Right. And now they're, they're, yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. Let's get to those questions. I could talk yeah. to you all day long, and yeah. you, whether you wanted to talk to me or not. Yeah. Because yes, I totally do. Too much information for one. Yeah. My head is exploding here. Oh, my I'm gosh. just so Wonderful happy. Stuff. I'm going to be honest. I woke up today. My hair, I told you, it was like a lion. I had to pull it back in this <laughs> ponytail thing. And I was like, huh, I don't know if I'm up for this. But you just made this so wonderful, Allison. Thank you so much. Wow. So we have have two questions. So Kaylee is curious to know um, why you're thinking of changing the process regarding social media files. Well, because I feel like that when you give something away, um, and this is like my friend Steve Saparito was talking to me about this, and he's like, when you give something away, people don't value it. So I, I don't know that I'm going to charge, but I think that there is a way to call out the value of those things and maybe show it on the invoice that I'm taking it off or whatever. But Still, TBD. I don't know, but that's, I, I do feel like just giving something makes it seem not valuable. That's a great point. And I agree with that hundred percent. Even if you're not charging, I think at a certain investment level, maybe they're, you're, I, I don't know. But you're still like putting it. it on the invoice yeah. and taking it off so that they can see that like, yeah, yeah I mean, that would have been, been, that yeah. would, it would have been a thousand dollars or whatever, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Jennifer has a, a really interesting question. So it looks like she's 25 years in in her business and she's thinking about maybe an exit strategy. So she's trying to, have you guys given that any thought? And I leave the conversation back to you guys in that. So, well, I, yeah. <laughs> I have thought about this a lot. And for me personally, um, I'm just not sure what that would be. We have not been in a position, it's our names and I kind of always thought if it weren't Jamie and I there visioning and designing that there really isn't a haze and fist. So my, our strategy has been to diversify our earnings, meaning whether it's uh, real estate or doing other things and investing so that I could, um, and my kids aren't interested in the business. So for me, it's probably that my exit strategy has been to try to diversify so that I can retire. Um, for me, uh, I'm 15 years in and I think about, I'm like, am I going to just be Richard Avedon and like fall over dead at 85 w during a shoot? Like, I don't know what's going to happen, but, um, but thinking about that, because, you know, we're not an inexhaustible resource. You can, people get sick, people get disabled, whatever. Um, so I have hired, a. Uh, uh, an associate photographer. She also does all my retouching. She had previously been a shoot and burner, I guess you would say, a uh, portrait photographer. She's been in this, was in the business same amount of time I was and solid skill set, really great girl. And so she's come in and started shooting um, commercial headshots for me and then seniors. And so um, what I'm trying to do is build out another person that can do part of that so that somebody else can work. The thing that I had with my scrapbooking store is that I didn't have to be there. I could, I, it was a process that ran itself and I ran better if I was there, 
But I realized when I came into this business, I built everything around me. And that was kind of stupid because it really isn't a business. You just own your job. So to tr for it truly to be a business, you, it, it, it exists outside of you. So as I talk to my employees all the time, you know, I say, you know, Allison Tyler Jones doesn't actually exist in my real life. I'm just Allison Jones, but that's too common of a name. So I threw my maiden name in there, Tyler for the business. So like Coco Chanel, we're all just working for Allison Tyler Jones, including me. We're all working for the brand and we're all shoring that up. And then how we do that, you know, so this Jenny, um, I don't know if you have an associate photographer, but that's, that would really be the only way if you wanted to sell the business is to create that asset as a business and sell it. Otherwise, the, the other strategy is that you have to take the money that you're making in your business and diversify it out to real estate and other holdings. Um, and then at some point, you're just going to shut it down. That's my thoughts. Sad but true. Yeah. Um, somebody else had another. Do, do you ever give, do you ever give discounts or packages? Never. I don't believe in packages. I, I believe I'm an a la carte. Um, everything I do is custom and, um, and I don't believe even in the word discount. I think free or full price is, is my motto. So, you know, we have maybe two or three sessions a year and Mary, I know for sure that you do this. You know, you'll get a call from somebody that says my wife is in stage four cancer, my husband, you know, whatever. Me charging full price allows me to go free on that kind of stuff and be able to go big for them. And so um, I would, I would say it's free because for love and it's full price for, because that's, I want to be able to give back to the world. Do you charge a session fee or creation fee? I do. Allison? Yeah. So that we talk about that in the first call. So when they say, you know, so how much, you know, how, what do you charge? And so our session fee, it, it's $1,200, 300 of that is, it goes toward the session free and then 900 is, is product credit. And that's, that's a during the week session, meaning Monday through Thursday, anything that's on a Friday or Saturday, which I try not to shoot, then the session fee is 600. So that would be, you would be, it would, so it's six and six. Yeah. Okay. No, it's not 14. No, it's 1200. Yeah. So it's still, oh, it's 12, I you're still 1200. I got you. Yeah. I like the 12 because it gives me flexibility in what the credit is so that that's it's smart. not making it more expensive. Yeah. Um, and I was so scared to do that, but I, we started that, um, a few years back, like we do it like October, November, December, mm -hmm. um, to like during the busy season. Cause that's when everybody wanted to pile in and it allowed people to, to go, okay, well, I don't want to pay that. So I'll come in September. And so it kind of like made the, didn't, we weren't all piled up in the busy season. And when people did come, then they were going to pay the 1200. But then you realize after a while, like everybody's you're, they're way over that minimum anyway. So why am I, I just should do it all year long, you know, right. but it took, it took me probably three or four years to dip my toe in that because, um, you know, this business, my husband, and I both work in the business. This is my sole, sole, uh, support of my family. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't have a sugar daddy. <laughs> you are. I keep, I keep looking for one. Yeah. <laughs> When you, um, this, the session be, uh, Allison, can people come in and just do holiday cards with you if they're a current client or do they always have to purchase an addition, right? I, I know we've had this conversation, but no. I think it's a good to say yeah. that. Yeah. Because there's not, because what you're doing is, I mean, with the holiday card, that's a custom concept, custom design. Like there's so much that goes into that. Why would you just want to throw that away on a holiday card? Right. You know, it's, Cause you do it, that a lot in yours. Yours are not, yours are yeah. not template. Like you don't, no. you don't phone it in like we do here. No, <laughs> no, I, I doubt that. You, I, I haven't seen anything you've ever done that's phoned in, but no. Um, but she, so she, we have, Kaylee had another question. She said, I'm curious yeah, that, about how, uh, you, how you approach the album. I think you, you have it pretty nailed down. Cause it's like she said, Alison Teller Jones is a brand. So you're not saying, Oh, do you want this album or this album? Or the, no, it's a pretty, it's, I pretty use white line. house. Yeah. White house albums. Uh, just, and the, my most popular one is like a 10 spread, 20 page. Uh, but it's a bit, with, like, with you're not heavy. offering 50 different colors and 10 textures. by 10. Yeah. And if they want a smaller one, then it's the same price. It's just, they can, yeah, but there's no, we're not pulling out swatches to pick. Yeah. No, you have a yeah. very, her, her products are very branded. You don't walk in there and there's not 57 different frame choices and this choices. Mm -hmm. and it's a, there's, it's a very limited because you, you want, you know how you, your work looks best. So yeah. they're not coming in telling you how they want it to be delivered. You're like, this is what I do. 
right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm going through and I'm looking at their house and I'm figuring out what's going to look best for their house. And that goes back to that design thing. Yeah. So that when they're coming in for the sales session, I already know, okay, they told me they went on an album. So I'm having the album is already laid out in pro select. Um, I have their walls. We, we will not do a view and order session without their wall photos right i have their walls laid out you know the options of like here's the family picture above the fireplace here's the family picture here and then here's your you know little gallery wall. or whatever depending on what it, whatever they've said they wanted and then we just you know we're going through and we're just populating that so it's it's pretty straightforward and then i have the frames on it like they can see exactly what it looks like and it's to scale and it just eliminates the fear you know they can visualize it yeah, because you're pre-designing. The other question was, how do you maintain control with so many design options? Well, I really, I think if you saw what I do, like most of everything I do is about the, um, it's about the picture and about the people. So when, so I don't have, you know, I'm not using filters. I'm not using, you know, graphics. It's like very tight. You know, everything I'm shooting is either going to be, you know, on a gray background or a white background. So it's very easy to design graphically and, you know, the abstract shapes. Um, so there's only certain frames in my mind that are going to go with that. And that really goes back to you as an artist and being an expert is that you, and this is something that's so huge. And I like would pause for a moment here to underline this, because I know we're getting to the end of this is that, I have found that the more, whenever, when, especially when I first started and I was looking around at what other people were doing, the more that I was like, oh, I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that. Oh, I'm yeah. going to try that. The less, the more scattered, uh, the less confident and the less successful I became. Mm -hmm. The more that I searched for, like, I love that. Like that speaks to me. I, I really, that, that makes complete sense to me the more that I narrowed and became more of who I already was, which is again, I, and I, and a lot of this took me a while to realize, like, I don't care about environment. I don't care about a meadow. You know, I love that. I love the look of that. And I've shot a lot of that, but like, really, I only want the people. That's why I quit. I did weddings for a hot second. I don't want to be one of the cake ladies. I don't want to be another vendor. I want to be, the ringmaster, the director, the party. I want to be Julie McCoy on the love boat. <laughs> Those of you who are old, you're going to get that. And I, I want it. them to come in and we're going to have a party and I'm going to capture this like connection and this love and this whatever between them. And then they're going to go away and they've had a great time. And then we're going to put this into their house. And then I am going to be their person for life. Yes. It's going to figure out where this stuff is going. And I'm the one that's decided I know how it needs to look. I know how it needs to be framed. And my, my clients just come in like at any time I have one client recently and I said, okay, so what do you think about this? And she's like, I don't think you've ever asked me what I thought before. I, she goes, you can't wait. She goes, I can't be the boss of you. You're the boss of me. Like, wait, I don't even know what's happening right now. That like, is I just awesome. need you to be the boss of me. I love it. I bet that you didn't hate that. <laughs> that I did. Cool. I did. hate that. I kind of felt <laughs> guilty for a minute, but then I thought, well, you know, really the, the best things and really it comes down to they're like, I have clients that are, you know, normal people. I have clients that are millionaires. I have clients that are billionaires. But one of the things that even if you're a billionaire, that is very, very hard to find is a service provider who has a vision, who knows how it should be. And that can take that off your plate, who can just say, this is how it's going to be. Let's do this. This is what I want to create for you. And collaborate with you, assess what your needs are and really fulfill your vision using my expertise and making that happen. That is what cannot be had. And that's what, if you do it right, you will build a business that will um, support your family. And, and that's very rewarding and, and very like satisfying. Ah, oh, and on that note, we will end that because I can't think of a better way to end it. I know you guys probably have other great questions. You're welcome to post them, I'm sure. And um, if and when uh, Allison gets a chance, maybe she hop on an answer or maybe we'll have her back because we could talk for hours and hours and hours because she's got such great information. Allison, thank you so much, Ronan. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely amazing. And if I can just summarize the conversation and the key things I did, what I absolutely loved about this conversation is Allison, how you've got 
three filters, but I think you have four filters. So you talked about your relationships and how you filter everything in your business around forming those relationships, that you're focused on what you want to sell and that finished art, and that it's not about loads and loads of choices, it's about what reflects your brand. And the third thing I absolutely loved was the long-term relationship, Mm -hmm. because, you know, it's sales and marketing 101, that it's so much, so so more economical to keep a client and sell them more over time than it is to find a new client. And the fourth filter then for me is the way your your Pareto's principle. If you analyze any business, 80% of your revenue comes from 20% of your clients. And you're so focused on that 20% of clients, those 20 clients that give you your, that meet those other three filters and bring you revenue and profitability over a long time. And everything you do in your business, you can see you subconsciously, you're you're unconsciously competent in everything you do in filtering through those automatically. So absolutely love that. Love that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So great to be here. So thank you very much, Mary. Thank you so much, Alison. We really appreciate you. And we look forward to having you back again. Thank you. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter, Easter, everybody. Happy holidays. And Passover.